All right, I'm doing a test today on RV and boat antifreeze. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about how antifreeze works, and to be honest, I don't truly understand it myself. Um, but when antifreeze gets cold, it doesn't just immediately turn hard and explode like water. That's sort of the perception. It actually turns into more of a gel. So I wanted to do a test here in the frigid winters of Canada to actually see at what point the, uh, the antifreeze is actually going to be dangerous to a boat engine in particular. So, you know, you spend eighty, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 these days on a boat, and you want to know that it's going to be safe. And so antifreeze, you know, is pretty cheap insurance. But there's different ways of doing it. Some people just uh, drain the block and leave the water. Some people uh, drain the block and run antifreeze through it. Some people just hook up antifreeze and it kind of creates a mixture of water and antifreeze in the engine. And depending where you are, that might be good enough, but I actually want to get some definitive results. So what I'm going to do for this test is I'm going to mix uh, ratios of antifreeze and water. So starting from um, one part uh, antifreeze to four parts water, so 20% uh, uh, concentration, and then going up 20, 40, 60, 80, up to 100. So this particular product, which is called Winterproof, I actually went and looked on the website for it. So it says burst proof to minus 50 Celsius. So I'm not really sure what that means. Does that mean that it stays completely liquid until minus 50 degrees Celsius? Or does it mean it still it stays in a gel-like state to minus 50 Celsius before your engine block was gonna explode? So I went to the website and looked and they don't say anything. They have a bunch of really nice videos telling them how magical your life's gonna be if you buy their product. Now, interesting enough, I also did discover that right on the bottom here, it mentions that there's uh, a guarantee. So it's burst proof guarantee to minus 50 Celsius. There it is, burst guard. So I looked up the particulars of that. Uh, what it says is it will reimburse you up to the purchase price of this jug. I bought this jug for 67 cents. So now granted, I did buy it in May, and so I got a bunch of cases of these for cheap, but that's not gonna pay a new $15,000 boat engine. So don't make much of this guarantee here. Other brands might be better, but I'm guessing they're not, or these are gonna cost $10 a jug. So I'm gonna start doing the mixtures, uh, then I'm gonna put them out into the cold and evaluate how they do in different temperatures throughout the winter season. Just so happens we're coming up to a cold snap here in Alberta, it's minus 20 degrees Celsius right now. Uh, I did choose glass jars specifically because I wanna see if they're gonna explode. Uh, they do have plastic lids, so I'm pretty sure they're not going to explode because they're not uh, completely contained and there is room to expand and pop the lid. So I don't think we're going to see any explosions from this. If we do, that'll be kind of fun. Um, and I got these syringes here so I can measure out exactly. Had a lot of fun at the dollar store today. So that's what I'm up to and uh, now we'll go into the test. Fifty mils, and I'm gonna put another straight fifty into here. So that's a hundred mils of antifreeze, good to minus fifty. All right, so here they are, minus 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. You'll notice they get a little bit lighter as well. I'm gonna shake each of them up here, although they're pretty well mixed now. So obviously inside your boat engine, there's no guarantee you're gonna get a great um, mixture between the two, but um, I don't really understand the chemical properties of enough to, to comment on that. But I think you're gonna end up with something relatively consistent through most of your engine. So with that, we're gonna go and uh, put them outside. All right, so there's the boat in question. It's about minus 20. I think you'll see it'll just cooling down. So negative 20 Celsius, roughly. 
That's one thing I'm going to note. So it's kind of hard to tell, but the top level of each one is right at the lower side of the lid. So if it does expand at all, we'll be able to tell that it's traveled up. Uh, obviously these are glass, so they're not going to be able to expand the vessel at all. But we're going to keep an eye on that too to see if there is any expansion, even if it's not in a solid state. All right, first set of results. So it's still minus 20 pretty much exactly. And I took the lids off of everything here. And something interesting happened. First of all, this was liquid a second ago. I took the lid off at the minus 50, and now it's partly frozen. So it's, it's kind of a, a slush right now, but it's a warmer slush than everything else here. So it's kind of hard to get a measurement, but on a 16. This one here is even more slushy. It kind of feels like a little slurpy texture. Again, it's a little bit warmer yet. And as you go, it gets more and more slushy. So it's getting hard to push in. So there's something interesting happening. This one is hard. Like, I wouldn't want my, that in my boat engine right now. So again, it's minus 20 degrees Celsius. You also look <clears throat> for expansion. So this one hasn't really expanded. This one hasn't really expanded. That one's definitely expanded up, as have the other two. You see, it's pretty much hard. This is kind of slushy. And that's kind of liquidy. So, I don't know. It's only minus 20. I'm not so sure I'm really happy with this stuff. All right, being that the results are all getting already getting weird. I've decided to put a, a control glass of water so we know that's going to freeze and I also put a control of a larger volume of the antifreeze. Not really sure why this one turned to slush only when I opened it so I want to see if it, the air pressure inside the vessel had something to do with it. So this one obviously has more air so we're going to see what happens with a larger volume of it and uh, we'll let the test continue here. All right, so it's about uh, minus 25, minus 24 and a half, uh, according to the sensor here. Um, clearly, water still freezes at zero, uh, shattered the glass. And I did that test just to prove that it wasn't somehow the shape of the vessel that was impacting whether or not it was bursting or not. Um, but it doesn't seem to matter which one you pick. This, this one is hard. This one's hard-ish. This one's the first one you can actually put the, uh, the probe into. And again, exactly the same temperature now, and it's balanced out. Kind of like a Slurpee. Um, don't have to lit off that one yet, but same as this. So you can tell this stuff. It doesn't really matter what dilution you have it at. It's going to get sort of like a, uh, uh, a gel or a kind of a slurry of some kind. Interestingly enough, and I'll get you a little closer here, you can see the volume hasn't really changed. Uh, it changed a little bit. So these ones have risen, I would say, maybe somewhere between 2 and 4%. And as you move to the left, they've, they've risen less. But ultimately, you're probably going to be safe. So even if you've only mixed it uh, one-fifth with antifreeze, you're actually going to be pretty safe. I wouldn't like that in my engine. But anything above, you know, the middle ground here, which is 60% antifreeze, would probably be okay. I think you'd be safe with. Now, just for interest's sake, this here is Dexcool. So this is a 50-50 mixture of what you'd put in your car engine. Uh, it is completely liquid. It's a little thick right now, but there's really nothing wrong with it. And so you can see the, the fundamental difference between something that's meant to keep your block from freezing and something that's acting as a coolant. So obviously you can't legally use that in your boat engine uh, for storage, but so I'm going to leave these out here for really probably the rest of the winter just to see how they do. If there ever is a point where we hit a really low temperature, uh, tonight should be around minus 29 or so. Curious to see if any of these are going to shatter. But my expectation is right now, as long as you have a reasonable mixture of this anywhere in your engine block, you're going to be okay. Even at just a one-fifth ratio, it's working okay. Um, 
What is also clear, though, is my labeling of minus 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 is nowhere near accurate. That's not how this stuff works. Really, it should be in percentages or ratios. So 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, and 100% antifreeze. So uh, really, my initial assumption was somewhat flawed in how this stuff works. But uh, my theorem behind all this was that even if you have some in your engine, it's not going to freeze. Because ultimately... You don't really care if it turns hard, you care if it expands, because that's where damage is done. It could be hard. Uh, your engine's not gonna run, but why would you want it to anyway? But as long as it's not expanding and exploding, like the water will. So we'll leave it and we'll check back in over the next uh, month or so uh, until the end of the winter. All right, so the winter's over. Um, and just to conclude the test, you can see that all five of them survived. The, uh, the coldest that we had was around minus 30 Celsius a couple of evenings, uh, right around when most of those videos were taken. Uh, we had a real rough five-week stint, uh, so it obviously got through all of that. Uh, you noted the, the glass one with the water in it, it completely exploded and it got destroyed. And so that left me thinking a lot about, well, why did these other ones not get destroyed? Even with a 10%, uh, or pardon me, a 20% minus 10 rating on this one, it never exploded. And so... I get to thinking it, it's not so much the burst proofing, it's actually the way at which the fluid now freezes. It doesn't freeze instantly. And I'm gonna show you a couple of graphics here to, to just get my point across. So in the case of the water, if you fill the entire vessel with water, and then the cold is gonna come from the outside in. So the outer layers are gonna freeze first because that's the first part that gets exposed to the cold. But when that happens, pressure will build up in the inside, and as that tries to expand, it has nowhere to go. So it can't go through the hard ice, so what it does is it just explodes the whole thing, and the water really just runs out everywhere, hence destroying your vessel or your boat engine. Now in the case of antifreeze, it's a little bit different. Now it's also going to be filled up, and it's going to get cold, and the cold's going to come from the outside to the inside, and so it's going to gradually get colder from outside in. Now the difference is the antifreeze doesn't get as cold as fast or it doesn't turn hard as fast. So what happens is it's still somewhat malleable. It can still change its shape. So as the freezing continues to occur down to the center core, that, that energy can come and push up through the top, creating a mushroom on the top, thus not shattering the vessel or the engine block in this particular case. So in the case of these containers, I think what happened is because the freezing process was slowed and it turned into a gel and not into a solid at first, it allowed them to mushroom out the top. And that mushrooming, I think, is what protected the vessels. And I also think that's what would protect your engine. So even with just a 20% rating in your engine, if you just slap some of this stuff in there with the water that's already in the engine, I think what would happen is it would, it would slow down the freezing process such that the the, the fluid would actually have a chance to seep into the areas where there actually is room to expand. I think if you put this stuff at any ratio into a vessel that had no expansion capability at all, like it was completely plumb full, no airspace at all, I think even that would explode. Um, but I think in an engine where there's lots of little cavities and air spaces, I think you'll actually be pretty safe with about almost any ratio in your engine. Now, if it did get stupid cold, like minus 50, then yeah, then maybe other things would start to happen. But really, it's about the rate at which it gets to minus 50 that matters more so than the absolute coldest that it gets. So if you take your boat indoors and then put it outdoors into minus 40, chances are that's going to more, do more damage than having it sit out there all winter long. So uh, that's what, those are my conclusions with this. Um, in the end, not at all what my, my premise was in the beginning. I kind of assumed that uh, you know different ratios would protect a different... Uh, different temperatures, but that's not at all the case. Really just get some of this in your engine and you're gonna be okay and it's not gonna blow up. That's the takeaway. So thanks for following, thanks for watching.